Hey guys, are you ready for another book video? <laughs> if you're new here, I'm Chelsea, and I'm a homeschool mom to six kiddos. Um, this is the third video I'm doing in a collaboration with Shannon from Our Herd of Turtles. I will link her channel and her video down below. Um, we took our first week, we talked about fiction books for teen girls. Then next week, we talked about mom books, both fiction and nonfiction. Today, we're talking about um, toddler and elementary books. Now, he's my youngest and he's five months old, but other than that, the kiddo above him in age is five. So it's been a hot minute since I've had a toddler. So I don't have a lot of toddler books here. Um, yeah, but maybe Shannon does, because she has a lot of little ones in that age range. Um, I will say, who writes Pajama Time? I love Pajama Time and the Going to Bed book. Um, and I can't think of who writes those. I'll link it down below. I also thought it would be fun to not just stick to um, elementary books that maybe everyone knows, like Little House on the Prairie and Charlotte's Web and things like that, but to branch out a little bit. So I do have some fiction, but I also have some nonfiction and just different things, um, things like readers and stuff like that, um, just for a different idea. I'm not sure what Shannon is sharing in terms of that yet, but maybe this will give you um, some fun ideas for if you're schooling from home right now, whether that's traditional homeschool or public schooling at home virtually, um, and maybe some Christmas present ideas for your reading kiddos or books you want to read aloud. So um, yeah, let's just get going. I think I will start with my really heavy pile here that has a couple of poem things and then just some nonfiction type things. So let's get going. This is Hudson, by the way. He's going to sit here and chew on his toy. And there's people walking around my house doing things. If you hear noises, that's just life. All right, I'm going to start. I have two poetry books that I want to talk about, and I have other poetry books, but these, or this one is my favorite. The other one has really pretty pictures. This is the Random House Book of Poetry for Children, and I got this off of Amazon. Um, it's not too pricey. I really don't remember. I got it a few years ago, and it has really cool pictures, too. We got this, um, and we use it for poetry tea time a lot, and then we just have a lot of fun reading it. So, um, it's not all in color. Most of the pictures on the inside are... You know, this is kind of like green and white, but it does have some colored pictures and it's in sections. Um, so it has a thing of con um, contents in the front. Nature, the four seasons, dogs, cats, bears, and bats, the ways of living things, children, children everywhere, city, oh city, me, I am, yep, home, you're where it's warm inside, nonsense, nonsense, I'm hungry. So it has, look at this, it's just the contents here showing you, and then introduction, and it has some really funny poems, some poems that'll make you think, just all kinds of good poems by all kinds of famous um, poets. So anyway, I really like this one, The Random House Book of Poetry. And then this company, I wanted to show, this is the only book I have from this company, but it's poetry for young people. So they take famous poets and they turn it into this book. They turn all their poems into a book for children with pictures and everything. So this is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow because we were studying him, so I bought it. Ginger's playing the piano to keep up with tradition of videos. Um, anyway, lots of good pictures. This is just their poems. They're not washed down for children or anything, so it's all their poems. We were studying. We were memorizing. What were we memorizing? The Wreck of the Hesperus. And so we memorized that and then we just read some of his other poems but it's got really good illustrations in here anyway you can check out the company poetry for young people we enjoyed it i'd like to get more okay these next two are kind of schoolish so i have the visual guide to grammar and punctuation so this is kind of like an encyclopedia for grammar and it just helps um and we put it in our morning basket when we did it and we would just read so all my kids would listen so my older kids obviously knew some of this um, my younger kids were learning. So it tells you what is grammar, what is punctuation, and it's just a really fun way so it goes through parts of speech and all kinds of stuff. So nouns, and we would just read and talk about all the nouns and, you know, we'd go around just talking about it in our little morning basket circle. Proper nouns, abstract nouns, and the kids have fun pointing to the things and then coming up with sentences. Sometimes we would put the different pictures into sentences. Um, yeah, so it just goes through. We get to verbs. And it gets, act, like back here, active and passive sentences, um, ellipses, bullet points, writing tips. Sorry, y'all probably can't see it as good as I can there. And it just goes through. So this is a really handy thing to have around um, in your home, whether you homeschool or not. It'll help your kids with their homework. 
And plus the fun pictures. I like, you know, real life pictures here. It just kind of draws them in and makes them want to look and then they're going to be learning while they're looking. So I like that one. And this is the No Nonsense Guide to Grammar, an awesomely fun way to the way we use words. I've only had one cup of coffee. I can't talk yet. <laughs> and this one is really fun. Um, let's see. I like all the pictures it has here. It has lots of good illustrations. So it goes through the parts of speech. And it has really funny sentences in it. Um, and then it also, like, literary devices. Goes through that, like puns, idioms, irony, and has grammar, so like commas, and it's a fun little funny sentences to read. It just um, explains it in a really interesting way that draws kids in, and it has funny pictures. So that's a really fun one. We also use that in our morning basket. Um, and then the kids, even my little ones, they liked the picture so much, they would have me read it to them just because they liked the pictures. I know Aria really liked it. Um, and some of that stuff, they might be too young to need to use that right now, but I believe that it gets absorbed in the brain anyway, and then when it is time for them to learn about it, it's a little easier. So, and my big kids like to look at it too. Okay, now this one is fun. I got this on sale at Mardell's a couple years ago almost. Um, the Bible Explorer's Guide. So this is really fun. We also did this in our morning basket once. Um, it has Bible stories and then it shows you real um, places, like pictures of the real places where it really happened and a more detailed look through drawings and real pictures of everything. So, like talks about the trumpets and feasts and holy days and it kind of gives them more of background to everything than just what you read in the Bible. So we would use it as a reference and if we were reading something in the Bible, we would come over here and find, you know, that same section, that same topic in here and look at the pictures and read everything. So it had like Noah's Ark and um, even had the Garden of Eden. Where did judges rule? And it has really cool pictures. I like to see things in real life. It helps bring it to life for the kids instead of just like reading it from the Bible and having no pictures because obviously there's no pictures in there. Um, and it's just good history also, you know? Now this book, um, my kids got for Christmas from their Mimi a year or so ago and it's 5,000 awesome facts. Um, and they really enjoy this. They'll just open it up and read all the facts. Some are crazy, some are funny, just all kinds of fun stuff. And it's a National Geographic, so it tells you its contents here. <laughs> and it has some big pictures with fun facts like this. But then it also has, can you see that? Those are all just facts. Facts, facts, facts. So. You know, the kid, if they're going to read this alone, really needs to be able to read. But they like to just sit down. It's like a coffee table book almost. Set it down, and they will pick it up. And some of this stuff, I mean, you'll remember for a long time, don't you? We know so many facts now about all kinds of things. There's bees, green facts, save the world, paranormal facts, just all kinds. Moving facts, 75 doggone facts. So this is really fun. Ooh, creepy facts. And it's like you can never read them all. We just read them and read them and read them. And my kids get a kick out of this book. So this is really fun. This will make a good Christmas present. Okay. Um, this one, my kids, as you can tell, really like. This is an Asborn book. Look inside your body. We have read this so many times. The little ones just like to play with it, really. And it's fun. It talks about all about your body. And it has little flippers. So here's the kid. You know, then it's going to show you all of his muscles. Then it goes to his bones. <laughs> Liam's going to help me. You going to help me, Liam? And then, yeah. So, like, you can pull up his bones and see his organs. Let's see if we can get it. Can open his ribs up and you can see. And this whole book is like that. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Isn't it fun? Riley degrees. Mm -hmm. This one here, see? This is just a fun book. So, you can tell we flip these flaps. You can open that up and see his teeth. And where his food, how it's going to go down here. It talks about um, diet, things like that also. Nutrition, I guess. Here we go. Sometimes when you eat something, oh, your stomach pushes it out again and you vomit. This happens if you're ill or if the food is poisonous. So it goes through that. And, of course, it talks about going to the bathroom. So it's a fun way to introduce these science lessons to kids in a funny way. And, uh, you know, you need to know these things. And talking about 
Going to the bathroom's not always fun, so this gives you a... Kids always think that's fun, though. But it gives you a good way to talk about it. So anyway, you can go through all these flaps. Look, isn't that fun? I just like it. And it says some things like, some people used to think that your feelings came from your heart. People probably thought this because your heart beats faster when you're scared or excited. You can flip it again. But feelings actually come from your brain. So lots of fun little tidbits in there, as well as being able to see how your body really works. Talks all about your brain. Has lots of flaps in there. Talks about your senses. Growing and healing. Body facts. Just all kinds of stuff in there. So that's a really fun one. That'd be a good Christmas present too. Um, my kids all really like it, especially the younger ones like to flip those. Now this book's another well-loved book, another us born book. And I know this seems silly because it's just a first illustrated math dictionary. This used to be Violet's favorite book. So we got this from the library and she loved it so much that my mom bought it for her. Um, used, like from thrift books. But it just, I think it really helped her learn her numbers. I didn't have to work with her a whole lot on numbers because she just really liked to read this book. So I should leave this out and see if Ari wants to look at it. Although she's just suddenly gotten a lot better at numbers, I'm not sure. But anyway. And letters. And letters, yeah, she's just suddenly taken off on that. But anyway, so it talks about counting, moving objects. But it's just really fun. So she would really just sit and read this book, have me read it to her. We would talk about the number and we would count the fruits. Um, here's the number in words. I mean, it just goes on and on. Look at that. Counting to 1,000. Okay. So it's just really cool. Has opposites, useful opposites here. Adding and subtracting odd and even numbers. You got long, short, thick, thin. You got rulers. I mean, you have all kinds of stuff in here. And then it has um, math words, slow. It'll tell you what, what slow means, quick. Fast, next, last, so like a little dictionary there. But it has lots of fun pictures, talk about curved and flat. And I think this is just a good book to have around and available to kids so they can get comfortable with numbers and math in a fun way. And you know, maybe they'll be like Violet and just love it and carry it all around and wear it out. Us born books, we have The Time Traveler and Children's Picture Atlas. So this one's really fun. Again, like a coffee table book, or we did this in our morning basket once too. I'll let you look at the contents here. Okay. And I love the picture. So it talks about the universe, what are maps, um, countries and cities. And then it goes ice and snow, desert. So it just keeps going like that grasslands it's this one forest and then look at these awesome maps so like here's asia it has one for every continent but they're just really awesome so this is a fun book to have you can put it in your morning basket you can leave it on the coffee table i just have it sitting on top of a bookshelf so the kids can see it so they can get it out if they want to and this time traveler is fun um we did this in our morning basket to go along with some history things but you could just read this and notebook with it if you wanted to. Um, it's from Usborn as well. So, your first journey in time. And I think they might have different ones. Um, this goes to a certain period that I think you can get some that go past this. This goes, visit medieval times, the Viking Age, the Roman world, and ancient Egypt. So it just goes, let's open it up. Robert the Squire. So you can read all about Robert, what his life was like to be a squire. Simon becomes a knight, so you hear all about becoming a knight, what it's like to be a knight, what the knights wear, going to a tour tournament. Got great pictures and a lot of really cool facts. Castle, we had fun with the castle one. But before you get to a new time, so say back to the Viking time. It's going to talk a little bit about it. It's going to show you where you're going. Talk some more about it. The people you will meet, it says. And then it'll get to, you know, where you are at to study. So it gives you a lot of background information before you get there. Just a lot of really fun information and a lot of really good pictures in that one. Um, now I'm going to go real quick and just show you a couple of reader ideas. My kids like these when they first start reading chapter books. And these are from Hooked on Phonics, but you can buy these used. Um, I think I got these on Amazon used. You can try thrift books. I know eBay has them as well. Violet's just started reading them. She's reading one now. Did you want to show them? Yes, I want to show them. Okay, show them what you're reading. Detective Dog goes on vacation. Do you like Detective Dog? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Six years old. Yeah, she's six. 
And she just finished these two this week, and she's on the third one, and that's how many there are. So they get a little harder. They're from Hooked on Phonics, like I said. I did these with my older kids. I sold the whole Hooked on Phonics system, but I repurchased these when Liam was learning to read, and he needed a good transition from reading simple things, like readers that you would get, like maybe The Good and the Beautiful, or even Bob books, easy peasy, just readers like um, that you would read, to reading chapter books. So this is the one she's on now. This is the third level. Let me show you what a first. So you would read this, book one, level one, and it starts out with sentences like this, or where the pages are real short, mostly pictures. Okay, and I think there's like four chapters in each one. So mostly pictures, but some words. Then you would get to level two, and you're gonna have some bigger paragraphs. And then she's on this one right now, level three, and you have lots more reading to do but i really like these i feel like they're a really good transition from readers to being able to read you know a real live chapter book it's just a really good transition and they have other ones beside detective dog you can get slam and dunk you can get space bug and they have other ones detective dog are my kids favorites now these are from Usborn, and these are phonic readers so this would be before you would get there but my kids love these so it comes as a set has 20 books in it you can tell we love ours <laughs> we have read these books so many times so it's just good phonic readers helps kids sound things out but they're fun and funny stories we like to find the duck on every page kind of like um the pigeon books you find the little duck also isn't it anyway and these have flaps but it's just a good easy phonic reader um when they're still trying to you know sound stuff out so and there's a bunch of different titles. They're not all about pigs, all different animals. I won't go through and show you every one. I got this, like I said, on Usborn, but just lots of different. Snail brings the mail. That was pig on a dig, so you can see. And in the back, um, it talks about phonics and some of the rules. So if you need a refresher on some of the rules or if you want to explain those rules to your kids, um, you can do that. So those are really fun. So those are readers. Now, picture books wise, I only brought two because a lot of picture books, honestly, we love and use and everything, but I don't have any that really stand out as like, oh, I love these. Most of the ones that we've like, oh, I just love these, they were from the library. So a lot of the ones we own are like Dr. Seuss and Sesame Street and Little Bear. I love Little Bear books and all that stuff, and I feel like they're very common. So, but also I did pull out um, Elephant and Piggy. We also love the pigeon books. These are hilarious. My kids love to read these. This is a big one I got on Amazon. It really wasn't that much. These are by Mo Williams. Anything by him, my kids find absolutely hilarious. So they will all sit and read. We make funny voices up for them. But I find when something is funny, your kid is more likely to want to read it. This really helped Liam when he was wanting to read. He found these so funny that he wanted to read. And then this is just one of my favorites as a kid. Love you forever. I'm sure you're, you've heard of it. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Or Yeah. So anyway. And it's a really cute story of a mom raising her baby. And he grows and grows and grows into a kid. And then he grows and grows and grows into a teenager. And then an adult. And shows her taking care of him and rocking him. It's got some really pretty pictures. And then she gets old. And it ends with him taking care of her and saying, as long as I'm living, my mama you'll be. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. So sweet, I love that book. So I had to share that. I'm sure you've heard of it, but I had to show it. Okay, now we're real quick gonna talk about some of these chapter books. The Cabin Faced West. This is really good, um, based on a true story. Um, the Hamiltons, they're in Pennsylvania. They see George Washington, it's real fun. Um, so kind of like Little House on the Prairie. It even has like the Laurel Ingalls, Laura Ingalls Award there. Real easy to read so the kids can read it on their own if you're wanting an elementary student to read on their own. It says ages 8 to 12. We read it as a read aloud. Um, just a really cute book, kind of like Little House on the Prairie. That'd be good for American history as a read aloud to go with that. Father Goose and His Gosling. So we did like a goose study on this. We read a whole bunch of bird books at one time and studied about the birds. Um, there's a movie that goes with this, Fly Away Home. So this is really short. I think we read it in, did we read this in one day or two days? Has yeah. really good illustrations. This is the true story behind the movie Fly Away Home where the dad and the daughter um, teach the geese how to migrate. Remember that movie? Mm -hmm. So this is the true story. It's obviously not like the movie, but kind of has a guy in it. Um, anyway, it's really good 
and you can do a you know a goose study as you go along with it migration study um it would be good to do a lot of like stem things tinker around try to buy build some flying crafts so this is a really good read aloud to also do bird study with so the burgess book for children and this has like peter rabbit and stuff in it it's really fun so anyway it's just a chapter book of these birds um, but it really talks about, it's like a living book, um, the birds' features, how they build their nests, um, how they talk, who they get along with, how they migrate. So it's very, very factual, has a lot of good learning in here, has some pictures, but I liked it. I thought it was a really good way to learn about birds. The Family Under the Bridge. We read this at Christmas one year because it goes through Christmas. This is a really good book to teach empathy, sympathy, all those things. A family kind of adopts this little homeless man. Um, they are homeless as well. They all learn to work together as a team. And it just talks about families and circumstances and loving people anyway. That's kind of what that does. I Love Anything at All by Kate DiCamillo. I don't know if that's how you say her name. Um, so I just picked, grabbed these two. We own more. Anything at all by her I would recommend reading because of Win dixie Obviously that has a movie with it. Um, of course the book is better, but the movie does a really good job. It's similar, but anyway, I would recommend reading the book also. This one was really good. The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Really good book, and it has... Um, it's a really easy read. So we do all these as a read aloud, but an elementary book... It could be, you know, elementary kid could read it. And it does have good pictures, but now I have just one hand. So, interesting pictures, I should say. It's very sad, okay, but very moving. Um, talks about how a rabbit grows from being super selfish, not caring about love, to, you know, learning that you should treasure those who love you. And it's just very, very good, very moving, but um, a little sad. has some sad circumstances in it, so you can think about that. My table has fingernail polish all over it. All right, last two. This one's very loved. We read it quite a, quite a few times. We read this one recently, The One and Only Ivan. There is now a movie. This was a really good book. Um, talks, you know, this gorilla. It's based on a true life story. Obviously, the gorilla didn't talk, so it's not real, but real life story. Um, the gorilla was in a mall type setting for many years, just in a concrete thing, never, never saw outside. And uh, his thinking through that and then when he finally gets to the zoo, how it feels and how he's thinking. And that's just really, really interesting and good. A Nest for Celeste. This would be another, like, living book. A story about art inspiration and the meaning of home. And this talks about, oh, what's his name? Something Abaddon, I think. Um, he was the one who started painting real-life scenes of birds. He would pin them on his walls. He's a real person. Um, and this mouse, you know, sees all this, these birds being killed and pinned on the walls. And he tries to help save a bird and... Anyway, it's really interesting and very good. My kids really like this, and it can lead to a really good study of art and animals, um, as well as friendship and what that looks like. So anyway, it's a really good book. All right, you guys, that is it. Sorry if I got a little rushed, but <laughs> that's just life. So anyway, but I think we got through a lot of really good books. I really wanted to show you all some different ideas. So hopefully I did and gave you guys some good ideas of books to add to your bookshelf. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to go check out Shannon. Tell her that uh, I say hello when you came from here so she'll know. And I will talk to you guys next time. Oh, be sure and leave me some good books down in the comments below. All right, bye, y'all.